All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking about classes in Python. So classes is a way to organize a bunch of functions and variables to serve a specific purpose. So for the syntax for class, you need to have the class keyword and then the name of your class. In this case, I'm going to have the name of my class called robot. And inside my robot, I'm going to have a constructor. You need the def keyword and then the init, two underscores front and back. And then you need to pass in the self, which is a pointer to the object, and then your um, variables for your constructor. Here I'm going to have a name and then a variable called how cool. So how cool is, you could have it so that it's actually set something by default. So by default, I'm going to say very cool. And this is just in case a user doesn't provide an input for that variable. You could have it already set to something. OK, so here I'm going to pass in. Uh, sometimes you could indicate a variable is private by using the underscore. Um, so that's like one method people do sometimes. And you could, I'm going to set my name to name and then my how cool to how cool. Okay, and then now I'm going to create my robot, call it my robot equals robot, name it Kevin. And if I put a breakpoint, and run this. Okay, if I hover over this, you can see that my robot has been created of type robot. And inside, you can see that you know my robot name is called Kevin, and uh, the how cool variable is called very cool. Okay, so that's how you would make a um, constructor and an instance of a variable for my class. So the next thing is you want to see if you can view your variables. So here, for example, I have my robot underscore robot. You can also do my robot. Actually, if you do my robot dot, you could see this, right? So I could print out my name, for example. Uh, so that's how you could view your variables and access them. So that's what I mean by they're not private, is because you could actually access uh, your variables here. So they're technically public to the people. And then, so you can also have um, functions that you can create. So inside here, you could have additional functions. For example, I could have def, and then say, for example, do something cool. OK, so in here, I'm going to say print and self name. And going to have the robot do something. So it's going to lift right eyebrow and winks. OK, so if I, I could call my function now, my robot dot do something cool. So this is calling, um, calling a function that you created inside your class here. This is what I'm doing. So if I run it, you can see that it says, Kevin lifts right eyebrow and winks. OK, so you made your robot do something by using a function inside of the class. So notice the word, the keyword self here. Um, if I don't provide the keyword here and try running it, you will get an error. So you can see if I run this, you'll see that an error has occurred. It takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. So that just usually means that you need a self keyword inside. So that's a common error that you might see if you forget. Okay, But it actually means something if you don't have a self keyword. And that's the idea of a static function. So you could have a static function. For example, I'm going to say too cool to instantiate. So inside, I'm going to print um, I am special and don't. I am special, and maybe like who needs an object? Okay. So this is a simple example of a static function. So I could, for static functions, you use a class name and then your function call. Okay. So if I run this again, it says needs self. Oh, because I'm calling the wrong function. So it's too cool to instantiate. OK, so if I run this, you can see that it prints out, I am special. Who needs an object? So 
That's the difference with static functions and non-static functions, is that static functions have the robot keyword using the name of the class directly, whereas an instance of a class will use the name of your object, in my case, it's my robot. Okay, so now let's take a closer look at how we can change the variables inside of your class. So notice here that, um, you know, if, if I look at my name, right, I have robot name here. So my robot name, as we know, is Kevin. And let's say we wanted to change our name. Can we do this? So if we, if we try printing out uh, the robot name, you notice that it says John here, okay? But let's see if it works outside of the scope here. So, you know, let's say my robot dot uh, underscore robot name equals Kevin or equals John. And if I try printing out the name here, so let's actually make a print function or a get function. So get name. Or let's just make this a print name because we're going to print it out. So I'm um, going to print and then self dot name. So let's try printing our name here. I'm going to print name before and after setting it. And if I run this, you're going to see an error. So print name is expecting a self. So that's what I mean here. You need to add your self keyword. So if you do that, run it, you can see that your name actually got changed from Kevin to John. Okay. So if you're coming from uh, C++, you'll typically do what's called like a getter and setter. So you could also change your name by having a, like a set name function, for example. And maybe I'll pass in a new name. So inside, I'm going to say self name equals new name, for example. So here I could try again, so like my robot dot set name, and if I change it back to Kevin, and if I print my name again, and if I run this, so I, if I run it, you will see that it went back to Kevin. So that's the second way you could change your name is using like a set function. So you'll see this more in things like C++. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about is you could have things that are global variables or more like static static variables inside your class. So uh, let's say I'm going to have a variable called every robot has this, and it's going to be a heart. Okay, so if I try running that, you could see, um, let's run in debug again. Okay, so if I run in debug mode and say my robot, you can see that I have access to every robot has this, and you can say you can see that it's a heart, and you can also modify it, for example, to CPU. And if I print this, if I print out every robot has this, and it'll change to CPU. Okay. And you could verify that every robot has this by if I create a second robot. I call my robot two and robot name say John. And then let's just print um, the variable. So every robot has this. And let's just print this twice. So one for the first robot and one for the second robot. So if I do this and run it, you can see that it prints out a heart twice. Okay, so 
that verifies that both of these instances have the same uh, variable here, a heart, because it applies to every instance of the robot class. Okay, so that's it for classes, and I'll see you in the next one.